Okay, so next up we're going to be talking about different layout techniques based on a bowler's positive axis point, okay? So we will not be discussing how to make up these numbers of these layouts, okay? So you can always look at the manufacturer's websites for suggested layouts if you want to know certain ball motions, so I would suggest looking at those. We will also offer some suggested layouts based on axis rotation at the end of all this. So we will be covering uh, all the different layout techniques for one-handed and two-handed players. So first off, we will be discussing the dual angle layout system, okay? So for this, you will need a Prosect, a grease pencil, and a bowling ball. So very simple, quick and easy. Don't need any more tools than that. So let's dive right in, dual angle technique. Okay, so when we're talking dual angle, there's three numbers that encompass a dual angle layout. Okay, so the first number that you're gonna hear whenever you hear a dual angle layout, let's say 60 by four by 30, is what we call the angle of the mass bias or the drilling angle, okay? So this will, um, and we'll explain what that does. Next up uh, in that equation, like I said, 60 by four by 30, we have the distance between the pin and PAP. And then third is going to be that 30 degree in that equation that we see on the screen here. So angle of the BAL or basically the height of the pin versus the fingers. Is it above or below the fingers uh, and how that will affect ball reaction. So before we go there, let's discuss the first one, which is the angle of the mass bias. Um, so the closer, that it is, so let's say it's a 10 degree, uh, and these are suggestions as well. So like this is the lowest you should go and this is the highest you should go, okay? Or else you're kind of playing with fire, so we, we, we really don't expect you to go anywhere uh, past these, however you can, try, uh, but again, you wanna stay within a certain norm to make sure that you're not turning your bowling ball into a paperweight. The more narrow that the V will be in this first uh, angle that we're going to be draw, the more that the ball will want to roll sooner, okay? So this is going to be something good for your speed dominant players or for uh, players that are you know lacking some revs or that just need a little bit more traction or getting something started on a longer oil pattern and also vice versa. So 90 degrees, which is going to create a larger V, is going to give you more length and a little bit more of a, of a lesser rolling type uh, ball motion, okay? So this is going to be really specific, especially on asymmetrical bowling balls. So if you really want to get like the more rolly types of rolls, try to stick with asymmetrical balls on these types of layouts, okay? If you're in this ballpark here, uh, basically this is the equivalent to most symmetrical balls after drilling, so it is very hard to get this type of result on a symmetrical ball, uh, just as a, a little side note. And we'll go over that a little bit later in a different course when we're going to be talking about how to understand what the determinator does after uh, a drilled bowling ball. Okay, so for the general population, um, in terms of layouts, what you're gonna wanna try to stick with is between 30 and 70 degrees of uh, a mass bias angle. And basically what this kind of translates into is either under the thumb, in between the thumb and the VAL, or on the VAL. So basically two would be the equivalent to 70, 50, and 30. So as we see here, 70, 50, 30. So these three will be the most common that you will be using in your pro shop for most of your clientele, and they can service uh, most of your clientele, okay? You could go with one and five, uh, which again are the extreme, so 10 and 90. However, you know, try to, try to tread carefully there, okay? Second uh, coordinate is the distance between the pin and the PAP. So once we have that, we want to determine how much flare we want to give to the bowling ball, okay? So anything that is closer to three and three eighths, which is basically putting the core at a 45 degree angle, will give us the most flare, okay? As we go further or closer to the PAP, we are losing a little bit of flare potential there. For most of your, let's say 180 average and less bowlers, even your 200 and average uh, and less bowlers, you can stick to like a four, four and a half, five inch pin variance on their equipment and it would be fine. Like you don't even need to go closer or further than that other than if they are bowling on some difficult patterns, maybe some different pattern lengths and they're having trouble with their physical game. But other than that, if you stick to like a four, four and a half for most of your league bowlers, that's what they want, right? So make the proper ball choice, give them a layout, the ball will flare because you're putting the pin in a flaring position and that's basically it, okay? So this is a, a nice chart for you to know how much the ball will flare, okay? 
Try to stay clear of going too close to six and a quarter and too close to three quarters because if, let's say your bowler's release is a little bit off and basically it will move the PAP a little bit, it is possible that now the pin might be past six and three quarters, which makes it go on the opposite pole of the ball. And basically now the ball will flare backwards, okay? So the max that you should try to go is like five and a half, maybe six inches if you want to try. And here, like, try to stay within one inch of the positive access point. There's really no uh, huge benefit to really pushing that limit. There's more risk than reward in that case, okay? And if you want to try it, I invite you to, I invite you to try it. But it, it basically, yeah, your first track goes there, and then it will go to the right. So uh, tread very carefully with that. Here are some examples of um, common VAL angles, okay? So the shorter or the, the, yeah, the, the smaller the pin to PAP VAL angle, the higher the pin is. So basically it makes it go higher above the finger line, okay? The higher the VAL angle, the lower the pin is. So that will bring it closer to the fingers, maybe sometimes even under the fingers for certain players, okay? So again, this is your min and your max, okay? Try to stay clear from going outside of those numbers and there's really no need for that. So what this will do, this will offer a sharper break point. So as soon as the ball sees friction, it will want to bounce off it a little bit harder. And this will offer a smoother transition off the break point. Okay, so when we look at those two angles, the first one being the mass bias angle, that will control length mostly. And this will control how whippy the ball is off the end of the pattern. Okay, so that's basically that one-two combo. Okay, so again, the first angle determines length. The second number, which is the pin to PEP distance, will cover left to right how much the ball will hook. And this one is how does it hook off the pattern. So you can see that with these three numbers, we can pretty much dictate the ball reaction that we are looking for for ourselves or our bowler. All right, so we have our ball here, okay? And first of all, we will be starting with a symmetrical ball. So again, a symmetrical ball only has a pin and a CG, okay? If you are using an asymmetrical ball, you want to use the pin and the mass bias, okay? So um, I'll bring two balls here side to side so we can tell the difference just at least for the first step, and then I will continue with just one ball. So on the first step, we will want to draw a line from the pin to the CG on a symmetrical ball. On the asymmetrical ball, we are ne neglecting the CG and we are going from pin to mass bias, okay? So this is basically the big difference between symmetrical and asymmetrical. All the other steps moving forward, exactly the same, okay? So we'll take this one out for now, and we will just focus on this ball moving forward, okay? So next step that we will be doing here is going to be uh, to dictate the angle at which we want to put the mass bias. And in this example, we will be doing a 50 degree angle. So what you want to do is you want to put this in your zero, uh, on the ruler side on the pin and zero degrees on the line that we drew from the pin through the CG. And on the right side here, I am going to go, let's say 50 degrees. So we're gonna do 50 by four by 45 in this example. Okay, so now that we have drawn that little mark, we want to stay where we had started. So we wanna keep our zero on our pivot point, which is our pin, and we will come pivot now onto the mark that we made here at 50 degrees and we will be drawing another line, okay? So again, always try to stay on the last line that you just drew, okay? I'm gonna take my prosect off, but you can keep it on. So basically here, this is 60 degrees, okay? So I'm putting the prosect back where it was, okay? So again, always try to keep your prosect on that line. And then the next step is to determine how much flare we want out of the bowling ball, okay? So we're going to be drawing our pin to PAP indicator, okay? So the pin on this line, to the PAP will now be at four inches. So I wanna to go to this four inch mark. So I'm gonna make a little mark here on the ball at four inches. This becomes our new home. So I'm bringing my zero onto pin. Okay, so from here, we go to here. Okay, again, same thing. I want my zero to be there. And I wanna make sure that this back rib, okay, is on the zero mark as well. Okay, this is not perfectly centered. Look on this side versus this side and you will see the difference, okay? Okay, so this is perfectly good here. So zero and zero on this side. And in this case here, I want to do a VAL angle of 45 degrees. So I'm coming here, 45, okay, as we see there. And now again, same thing, I'm just pivoting, okay? And I will match these two lines together 
drawing my VAL. Okay, so this is the vertical axis line. Okay, so here we have four inches and here we have 45. Um, okay, so here we have 50 by four by 45. And if you see, we have a, a letter N, okay? So if you're doing this properly, you should see an N here on your ball, okay? Uh, rule of thumb, the narrower the N, the more that the ball is responsive to friction, so the earlier it will roll, the wider the N, the slower it is to respond to friction, okay? So as we see here, here's our N, okay? So this is a pretty generic, you know, pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio here. So this will be a very good layout, you know, for basically any bowler uh, on a generic house shot should not be an issue, okay? So if we recall the famous lines that we have to use all the time, we have here, so write them down. We have our V, A, L. We have our P, A, P, okay? In this example, we will assume a PAP of five by one inch up, okay? So this is the example that we will use for this bowler, okay? So I have my VAL, I have my vertical degree. So we will be reading this backwards, okay? So instead of going up, we will now be going yeah. down, okay? So we're reading this backwards. So from my PAP, I will be going one inch down, okay? So now this here is pretty much done. So I could, you know, cross it out, okay? Now what do we have to do? Five inches across. So this is horizontal, okay? So I'm just gonna make this line a little bit bigger, okay? So from here, line up your prosect to be perpendicular to this line. This is the hard part, okay? This is what you're all going to forget at home with the first time, okay? Make sure that you are perpendicular here, and we will now want to draw a line up to five inches, okay? Because that is our horizontal PAP coordinate. And now what that we're here, this is basically our grip center, and I will want to draw my center line, which is perpendicular to the midline, okay? And there we have it. So this is our grip center. This is where we measured five across, one up. That's how we got that on an existing bowling ball. And now we have our fingers and thumb with the, grips, uh, with the grip center right there. So this is 50 by four by 45 on a symmetrical ball using the dual angle technique with a five by one PAP for a right-handed bowler. Uh, obviously, if you're doing this for left-handed, instead of always using the right side of the prosect, use the left side of the prosect.